Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about what to expect during chemotherapy in terms of complications, things that can happen. We've talked in our previous video about common side effects of chemotherapy, but I wanted to cover things that are a little more severe, things that might make you have to stop chemotherapy for a while and then start up again or stop altogether. So as you may remember, if you check out our other video, fatigue is really common with uh, chemotherapy. About 1 in 20 people, so 5% of people who have chemotherapy, will develop long-term fatigue. It's probably something to do with the inflammation that happens with chemotherapy and your body's response to inflammation. It looks like the best thing is probably doing more exercise, believe it or not, chronic fatigue responds to gentle exercise and reach out for support if you need that. Reach out to a friend who can go with you. Try to get a little bit of light, normal natural light uh, every day is important for the way our brains regulate sleep and energy. Even a cloudy day outside has more light than a fully lit inside room. So a little natural light every day, a little movement every day. Some people don't like the word exercise, so I use the word movement. You can do everything from stretching to yoga to a walk around the block. We're not talking about running for a marathon, although lots of people want to do that. And I say, good for you, it won't be me. Other complications of chemotherapy, I'm going to talk about the ones that can happen during chemotherapy quite uncommon these days, but people can get a bloodstream infection when they're on chemotherapy. I'll talk about the immune system for just a minute. When we think about the immune system, we often think of it as one thing, but it's actually much more like a tree. So if you can picture a large maple tree, maybe one that you remember from your childhood or one outside your window right now, there's the, the trunk and then there's some thick branches. The branch of the immune system that chemotherapy affects is about the size of a branch you might hang a bird feeder on, or maybe a very small swing for a small child. It's not the whole tree, it's not even a bough of the tree, but it's one branch. And that branch of the immune system, the neutrophils, which are quite mature white cells, they fight bacterial infections and chemotherapy can knock down the production of that type of white cell in your bloodstream. And that can make you at higher risk if your counts go very low for a long time at risk of bacterial infections. And those bacteria come from our own body. They come from our mouth, they come from our GI tract. They're not as likely to be airborne like viruses. Of course, the last thing you need when you're going through chemotherapy is an airborne virus. So you'll see a lot of recommendations to wash your hands and to stay away from people who are ill, even to stay away from, let's say, school-aged children. And it's not because you're at higher risk of getting the germs that cause common colds, but because if you get a fever, we have to assume if your white cell counts are low, that it's a bacterial infection. And there's a whole lot of fuss we make about that. We have to draw blood cultures and have you seen in the doctor's office and maybe even be put on antibiotic. Some of the things we do with chemotherapy now can help prevent your counts from going really low, like things we call growth factor shots. Those shots we've talked about in other videos, they don't make you grow, they make your white cells grow. They come out of your bone marrow earlier. Your bone marrow is the the thickness of your bones that produce these white cells. So we can boost those, but sometimes even when we boost them, they're not high enough and you can get a bacterial infection. If that happens, you may have your chemotherapy dose delayed. Your next treatment might be put on hold for a little bit. Or if you were on white cell boosters and your count still went low, we'll cut down on the dose a little bit of your chemotherapy. Don't worry about that kind of dose reduction. Those dose reductions are in response to your body's need. So you needn't worry about those reductions. Or even if chemo has to stop, you've done your part. This is where we try to balance the risks and benefits of chemotherapy. Okay, one other thing I wanted to tell you about with chemotherapy is your liver can get irritated. Our liver, which is 
for the vast majority of us, located on the right side under the rib cage, filters out all the toxins in our body. And chemotherapy is mostly metabolized through the liver. So the liver gets rid of it and dumps all the unused chemotherapy and unnecessary chemotherapy that doesn't need to go to the cancer cells if there are any in your body. And you actually have it go out through the GI tract into the toilet. But your liver can also get irritated by chemotherapy. It's doing its job and it's clearing those, but it can also kind of annoy the liver. And so that's another reason we do blood tests before every chemotherapy treatment, if it's every two or three weeks. We do blood tests to make sure your liver is doing okay with the chemotherapy. It is exceedingly rare for your liver not to recover from chemotherapy. I think I've seen this maybe once in my entire, in my entire career and it wasn't with somebody getting chemotherapy for breast cancer. So those are the main complications of chemotherapy. There are some rare complications like irritation of the lung or fibrosis of the lung that's usually reversible. There's sometimes irritation of the pancreas with different medications. Anytime you start a new chemotherapy, your medical team will give you information about what could happen with that medication and what you ought to do if you notice certain symptoms. Very rarely we can see long-term effects. I mentioned fatigue earlier, but we can see long-term effects of chemotherapy. And because they're individual for every chemotherapy drug, you should ask your medical team, is there anything about this I should worry about? Surprisingly, chemotherapies also, to some people maybe, chemotherapy can also increase the risk of blood clots. It irritates the veins, and if you're a smoker or if you've already had a history of blood clots, you can actually have a higher risk of blood clots from chemotherapy. That's especially the case in people living with advanced cancer because the cancer itself increases the risk for blood clots. So if you develop swelling or pain in your legs or your pelvis, pelvic area, this part of your body, or you develop sudden shortness of breath, you should seek medical attention immediately. And that's because we would want to catch the next blood clot. It's the next one we worry about the most. So if you develop swelling in your legs, upper legs, lower legs, or um, shortness of breath that came out of nowhere, whether it was sudden or crept up on you over a couple days, give your doctor a call because of the possibility of blood clots. So I've covered the main complications. Again, not so much side effects, but more longer term complications. I hope this has been useful for you. If it has, click like and subscribe. What that does is it helps other people just like you find this video.